friends, Matt, welcome back to the job. And today I want to do a video about measurements. So I have um, quite a few things going on here. I want to talk about quite a lot um, in such a short amount of time, hopefully. So uh, we have a cylinder and we have a piston. This uh, cylinder and piston are matched. Um, I have separated them into individual boxes. So one back box, the box has the cylinder head, the piston and the cylinder um, all together from one bank and vice, you know, same for the other one. Look, there's only two. Now, obviously you can do this with this. If you had a straight four, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't just separate the cylinders out. Any road, that's not what we've got in front of us. So let's just talk about what's in front of us at the time being. I want to, in this video, talk about measurements, tools used, why, how, and so on. So, uh, phones are always a bloody brilliant thing to have, so you can take pictures and stuff like that. So I've got that on speed dial, for fucking help me. <laughs> and uh, so let's just get into it. Um, I've got some pictures. Uh, of the cylinder. Now, this is covered in shit, right? It, it's it got blasted and stuff, but it's not in the best condition ever. It's still got grime and crap on it and stuff like that. Don't grab a rag and just stick it in here and clean out the cylinder. Just fucking leave it, right? I'd leave this. Um, you don't touch it until you've absolutely cleaned the living shit out of the exterior. And then even then you don't really need to touch it, right? Um, you'll see me touch this for demonstration purposes. My hands are clean, as clean as they can be in this situation. Because um, I just want to demonstrate a few things. The reason why I don't want to clean it, especially if you've just gone and got stuff replated, is a bit of sand grit. This is nicosil coated. It is very hard, um, but it's very thin, right? So you might put something like, you know, a bit of grit, which is could be quartz, it could be aluminium oxide, it could be fucking anything. Uh, usually a ceramic of some description, and it can scratch these things. But not only that is that the the plating is sat on something very soft, which is the aluminium casting. So if you put no pressure on it, you can actually break the the plating because the material underneath, giving it support, just buckles it just compresses and then buff so don't just think because something's hard you can't scratch it um, or not even scratch it damage it you know what I mean if you have a material that's close in hardness to what this is then you can still fuck it up um, so you know touch this the minimal you can um, little scratches though the fucking things covered in scratches as you can see from the pictures um, you can see that there's really spaced apart honing marks and what that is is that when you hone it's not a perfect procedure some scratches will be deeper than others and the you know the shallower scratches will disappear quicker than the deep ones um, so don't be alarmed if you see something like this on a bike that's done about 50,000 miles it's not the end of the world um, you know you can still you can, basically you can see the deepest hone marks that are left in there. Uh, you will see as well in this, if I can master of zoom here, master of zoom, to a degree, so I don't want to go too far. You will see that there's an area here where it's the dead space in the cylinder. This is where the piston rings don't go any further up at TDC. Sometimes you'll see two bands. You can see here there's two bands. Usually that's when you rev the living crap out of it and the rods are stretching and or general high load, low running speeds and stuff. So you'll get like two tide marks. You'll also see there's some dead space at the bottom here below a certain region because the piston doesn't go any further than this. Um, good thing to have is the manual so I've got on the screen over there in the background you can't see that but it's just basically the PDF of the manual of this. Um, so let's talk about measurements very quickly. You will measure um, in two directions, you want to go front to back, which will be this way in this example, front to back will be that way, front or back, back or front, 
front or back, whatever, it doesn't matter, and side to side. You will expect some egg shaping or some it to go oval, so you'd expect bigger measurements front to back than you would be side to side. Main reason is, is the piston goes through a motion that's like this, you know what I mean? Or it goes slap side to side like this, you know what I mean? And, you know, you're going to get more wear in there than you are side to side, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and you're going to see that, you're always going to see that. And you're never going to get rid of that either. It's just things wear. It doesn't matter if you made these out of extremely hard materials that it's still wear. you always get wear right because things are just imperfect the structural bonds of atoms aren't perfect blah 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 blah. thermal cycling all sorts of rubbish and nasties and great stuff wear is just it's just what happens right it's all to do with entropy and let's not go down that road when you measure this you'll measure it front to back it'll say does it say the manual uh, inspect the cylinder wall for any scratches, nicks, or any other damage. Measure the cylinder bore diameter at six places. Yes, so it does say six. Um, you'll do at the top. You will if you can, you can't see that pointer. I need a better pointer. This will just have. It'll have to do, yeah. So at the top here, uh, not in the dead space, uh, a bit further down. So like I don't know, ten mil down. In the middle and then at the bottom but 10 mil up from the other dead space and you don't measure at the bottom of the spigot here you don't measure this right this is fucking useless this will all should always be higher just like the dead space at this side the reason why is the rings don't rub here so they're not going to wear uh, and you like I say you do front to back and the reason what you're looking for is you're just looking for an hourglass shape or whatever you know what I mean because you could be excessively wearing at the bottom of your stroke at the top of your stroke for multiple reasons that I can't I just can't go into there's so many different possibilities of why these things we might do that just in a separate video why cylinders wear in certain ways it's actually not a bad idea I also want to do people have been badgering on for ages about doing what rings work with the best cylinder materials is it steel sleeves Diacil, which is just basically cast aluminium with a certain type of aluminium. Um, nicosil coated, cast iron, steel with steel sleeve with nicosil, aluminium bores with nicosil, and DLCs and other variants of them. Tri nickel cobalt, fucking all sorts of things. Um, and you know, chromoly rings, cast iron rings. 4368 DNY, what the fucking hell it's called. Just all of these things. And the fact of the matter is, is there are general, general, very general basic rules, but you can't. And let me pull out. There we go. Um, very general rules, but the fact of the matter is, is no one actually quite knows. Right? They will tell you they know, but no one does an extensive case study comparing them all over controlled conditions right so you know some engineer he'll you know he's in charge of this section kind of thing and he will go to some tribology um talk and he'll do his research in this that and the other or you know he's been taught by someone that this you know is the hearsay and this is the best for this and because every single system is completely different right uh, thermal mass of this, what piston material, how big are the lands, how big are the rings, what's the diameter, what's the operating temperatures, what's the operating speed, what oil are you using, what horn are you going for. There are so many variables, that's why I'm going to ignore it and just say, read what you want. You know, if you want to take, you want to read Hot Rod magazine and they say the best is this with this, then you decide if you want to believe that or not. You, you know, go, they run that and that with that particular setup, it works. Is that better than other ones? Who fucking knows because no one's actually done that kind of work. Best thing, go what the OEM have got, unless you're having massive problems, right? Um, the R3 is having problems and the fact that that is a diacil cylinder, um, might be the cause of that, but that's for a different video. Let's we'll talk about that at some other time. Um, as far as this cylinder is concerned, one of the main things I'll be worried about straight away off the bat without measuring anything, and I'll pull you in again. Let's zoom. 
um, is this lip here, right? Is there a lip? So you get your nail, you push in. I'll drag back out. I can't feel fucking anything there. Absolutely nothing at all. Right, so let's just ignore the cylinder for a while. We'll just stick with cylinders. And the first thing I want to show you and talk about is uh, dial ball gauges. So one of these and how you basically set one up, how they work and you know what is the whole point and blah, 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 blah. Dropping every time. Every time. Right then, where were we? Oh yes. So let's talk about um, dial ball gauges. So this is a dial ball gauge. This is a Mitsuyo one. It comes in a box like this, and it has all these gubbin bits in it. I want to show you this gubbin's bit because this is what matters. So. The way this thing works is that it has uh, a top end with a dial on and a telescoping bit. So let me just master zoom here. There we go. So the way this works is it has an arm and it has two skateboard wheels kind of thing, and a little plunger. And when you hit that plunger, this is what gives you a reading. Each increment on there is a micron, so this is really, really quite sensitive. There's me sticking a pube in it, you see, and it's just fucking, it's loads. And it moves quite a lot. So the way this thing works is that on the bottom end, again, here, you have your two skateboard wheels, and using a roll of tape, it basically sits... Let me show you, it sits like this. So the two skateboard wheels sit either side and the plunger sits at the bottom like that and this whole thing moves. And it's that plunger there, that tip, that measures things. On the other side of it is basically this, the, the, it's like a ball bearing stuck in the end of there. So you've got three points of contact. You've got two here on your wheels, so it follows the curve profile like that. These are rounded, they don't spin, they're just rounded bits of steel. So you've got three point contact like that and then a plunger that then touches the wall. So if you move this bit, so if, what I'm doing is I'm moving the wheels, you look, the gauge doesn't move, right? It's only when I hit the plunger there, and that's what we're measuring, we're measuring this. So how the hell does this work? Because this would be one hell of a scale to measure different cylinders. So this goes from 50 millimetres all the way up to 100. You can stack it up to about 106 or 10 or something. 106, I think. But basically what you do, and that's why I've got to pull you back out again. I just wanted to show you the, the pieces, is that this thing goes in your bore. So move my piston that way. This thing goes in your bore like so, and then you take a reading like that, right? So to show you... That goes in like that, skateboard wheels, like so, and the plunger touches as we do that. And you rock backwards and forwards, and you'll see the motion. So, what we do with this, is this isn't the only bit of measuring equipment we need. We need a micrometer. So, I've set this and locked this off at 90, the, the cylinder size is between 98 millimeters exactly, and 98.015, so... 98 millimeters and 15 microns. So I've set this to 98.5, so 98 and 500 microns. And what we do, I've got to kind of do this um, in front of you, kind of like, you know. I've got a little clamp here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the, you'd use your vice or something, but I'm trying to do this all in camera shot just sat here like that so basically just imagine you've got your your micrometer in your vice like this and usually that's why they have these plastic buttons or a plastic bit on the bottom so you don't crush the living shit out of it and this isn't going to work too well because it's a tiny little vice but basically you just stick that end in there and you stick your plunger 
end in there like that. So you, you basically between the two and you rock about and find the tightest spot. And what you do is you look at your dial gauge up here. You can't really see that. Let me move that out of shot and then do the same thing again. So you stick against your plunger. And you see we're there. We're just scanning around and you can see my dial moving. Right, so let me try that again, like so. And you find a bit there. Now I've got it close enough to zero. We've got it set to two, approaching two and zero. So when this little dial in there says two, we're at zero. Right, so because we've set this distance here now with a micrometer, we've set this distance here at uh, 98.5, right? So this should squish this down and we should get a bigger reading, right? So if we sent this at 98.5, we should take, it should be two, four, six. It should say seven, right? Seven and a half. So it should be somewhere there. Seven and a half on the gauge. I know it's, yeah, it's not the most complicated thing in the world, but it's a bit, You basically you... You're measuring the reduction, not a size. So you're not getting a bigger number. You're going for what you, you've got to minus it away. So basically what you do is you just stick it. So I'm, I'm looking at the screen. So you stick your tail end in first. If you, can, if you can't see that. Tail end in first. Oh, for fuck's sake, my bloody sleeves. Right, let's do it left-handed. This is going to be a fucking laugh. Tail end in first, like that. Right, and then I'm levelling it up. And what I'm getting there is I'm getting 780. So that's 1, 2, 3, really. So that's 98.03. Unless I've fucking, I probably haven't done my micrometer properly. Um, so that's that way. Let's check this way. That should be the greatest number. There we go. Let's try that one. That's more like it. Oh no, we're getting bigger there. We're getting. I've got to set this up properly. I've just done this for the you know my micrometer set ish. I haven't calibrated that either with the standard. Blah blah blah. Like I say, I'll do a video actually measuring these but I just want to show you what you do you know what I mean and then you you know you'd go down the bar down here and you'd measure that we're getting a smaller dimension one of the best things to do is you can do is go down to the spigot so I'm right at the bottom measure that and then you can come up and just measure the difference all the way down the bar and you're just looking for the highest measurement um, let me move this over here so I can show you what's happening at this end. So you see what I'm doing is I'm rocking backwards and forwards and that there is the highest measurement and then the needle will go back again. So all I'm doing is I'm swaying this left to right and you can see so this is coming up the highest measurement here. I'm rocking that's the biggest part and then it goes back down again so this where the needle reverses, that's your measurement there. If you come up in the bar, you can still see that. Yeah, we're looking about the same everywhere. At least we've got that. We go down in the bar. Here comes our highest point. Yeah, it's about the same all the way down, which is quite funky. But yeah, you know, you get your measurement like that. The best ones are the digital ones because then you don't even have to do that. You can just basically set a zero and then look at all the differences and so on and so on and so forth. But the whole point about this is that this is a comparator, basically, right? So basically what you're doing is that this, this micrometer, that is your measurement device. And then you're using this to set this thing and then you're using this as a comparator. So you're saying, oh, well, this is measuring exactly out at, um, you know, whatever increments. And it's because I just, I've left the old pins in, uh, the old scale in there. 
So that's saying, I'll, like I say, I'll set it up properly. I'll set it up so zero is the number we're looking for, and then we can then see the difference, if you get what I mean, which is what you're really meant to be doing. So that's a dial bore gauge and the very basic principles. I will do a video where I will set it up properly and have it all in one shot because my intention here wasn't to actually measure, measure the bores, it was to do a video talking about the principles of measuring these things. So we'll put our cylinder to one side for a second. The next thing obviously is you have your piston, right? So you'll see in your diagrams and stuff like that, you can measure your wrist pins, which again, like I say, will do, which is a simple job. You know, you just clean it off. Um, you clean it off and then you let it to sit for a while to get to ambient temperature so you're not fucking around with your what is it's and then you if you can you don't touch it you just stick it here you get your micrometer out and you measure it right try not to touch these things with your hands if you want perfect measurements the perfect measurement isn't really the problem it's having repeatable measurements if you are going to say oh i'm measuring two or four rods or pins or whatever you want to kind of make sure that they're all stabilised and all in the same conditions to do so. It's not imperative. We're not racing Formula 1 here or anything, you know what I mean? Um, a good thing to do is to also... Uh, you've got three regions here. You've got one, two, which are kind of like a pair. They're in the piston. And then you've got the middle one, which is part of your conrod. So you'll see that there is bits in the middle where they're not worn. These actual marks there are what it was like with its original coating on. There was a coating on there. That coating is now gone. Um, that's not the end of the world. I would never ever really worry about that. Uh, and then we get to pistons. So we can do quite a few measurements with this. And I want to talk about two of uh, Let's talk about three of them. Let's quickly talk about piston diameters. So on the drawing, uh, on the, what is it? It says... The service limit is 97.880 millimetres for a piston. And then it says 10 millimetres and shows a, a, a diagram. Basically, they're saying 10 millimetres up the skirt, you need to measure there. Why? The reason being is that this is the thrusting surface. Right on the end here, you're on the flappy bits of the piston. And um, these are greatly affected by thermal variance because they're right at the tit edge. If you're going to expand, you're going to expand the most on the ends kind of thing. Um, but this is where it's more supported. So right there, you can get a good clamp on there, get a good measurement. Not that you clamp the living shit out of it, but it's also the region where most of the thrusting happens. Um, to a degree, it depends on the cylinder design, piston design, so on and so forth. Uh, there's also... Um, Obviously, you know, if you measure up here around the lands and stuff, there can be asymmetric wear, uh, all sorts of, there can be regions, blah, 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 blah. It's, there's a lot of thermal instability around here during operation, as in it gets hot, cold in different regions, there's different thermal masses, there's different conduction paths. So it'll cool around here because the fins are here. You know, because it conducts away if you get a splash of oil, blah, blah, blah. It just goes on and on and on. So right here, up 10 millimetres in, is a nice region to measure. It's, it's more of a, a, a stable region that will give you the correct size. The other thing is, as well, is that it depends on um, some pistons, because some pistons are asymmetrical. They'll have a massive skirt here and a tiny one here because of thrusting, side loading, and so on. What I'm getting at is quite simple. You've got to follow what the book says for your specific engine because there are so many things that the average Joe or most people don't take into consideration about how these things might affect these things where the engineer has made the decision, it was his job to sit and think about this for a while. Now, this engineer that sat and thought this about this for a while might have done this in 1984 and no one has come out with a better reason why or no one's come out with a better way of measuring it, a more accurate way of measuring it. So it's a legacy thing. It stayed that way because that is the most stable way of doing it, just say. You know what I mean? So the not to be scoffed at are these measurements and how you should measure them. Don't just willy-nilly grab it with some bloody guesstimators and go, yeah, that's fucking about right. Um, there's a reason why you know these specific tools are used you know like this you know your micrometer there's a reason why these things are used and you know if you don't have the right equipment stop measuring it 
you know. So right now, if I just take a measurement of that, what is that saying? I'll find out where I am now. So that would be eight. So that's the twelve and a half. What would that be? One one two five. So one two five minus that'd be eight seven five. So the service limit is eight eighty. So am I close to it? Getting close to it. Oh no, just beyond it actually, sorry. Depends where you go, but this isn't the best way to be floating in mid area. I'm just fucking around. Like I said, I'll show, I'll do a video. I probably won't even say much in it, just show you the proper way of, you know, best thing to do is try and sit it down like that and come in, you know, at level to it and, and blah, 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 and stuff like that. You know what I mean? There's ways and means and hows to do it. Not fucking hovering in mid air. You know, I've seen loads of people do it. They fucking sat here like this. They've got a big micrometer like this. Right, my little thing will fit in there, won't it? And they're like this, just, oh yeah, just, that'll fucking do. Right, like this. Not measuring the same place, tipping it, fucking pivoting, bloody all sorts. They're fucking, they might as well be just bloody like this and just fucking guessing. You know what I mean? Um, there's, there's, there's not so much procedures, just best practices. Any road. So, the next thing I want to talk about in this video and finish on this is... Two measurements, three measurements, four measurements, five measurements. It's quite a few measurements. Uh, piston, piston to cylinder clearances, right, like that. Piston to cylinder clearances, so the gap between the piston and the cylinder. This is all about blow-by and actually power-related stuff like that, about sealing. There is piston ring end gaps, which we'll do a separate video about. Um about this, oh, fucking hell. See, everything should be clean and it's not bloody clean, so I shouldn't have even done that, you twat. Um, so piston ring end gaps, piston to cylinder clearances, um, you can even measure between the rings and the lands, so you can measure the clearance between the rings and the piston itself. There are loads of things you can measure, stuff like side clearances, blah blah, but just for this, I want to talk about the touchy feely gauges. Right, so. Uh, touchy feely gauges do not obsess and stress about these things. But there are things that I want to do mention because I see it all the time and it's bad, right? So, number one is a touchy feely gauge is like measuring torque by going. Oh, it feels about right, right? Touchy feely gauges are a bit more accurate than that, so I'd say that you know, just talking it by hand is one percent accurate. These are one point one percent accurate. It really is that bad um, because they are feely gauges. You do this on a touchy feely, um, and I know this for a fact. I have seen and measured what these can do. So you'll stick a, a, a 14 micron one in, just say, and it will go. You stick a 15 one in, and it won't go. And then you use an interferometer, and it's 16.8 microns. That's not fucking, you know, 14, no, 15, uh, no, 14, yes, 15, no. Well, it's 15, you know what I mean? Between 14 and 15 is what size it is, and it's fucking not. Now, for us lot fucking around in our sheds and what have you with your motorbike, it really, really doesn't matter. I just want to make people aware that the accuracy the accuracy of these things because of crap, debris, because of the profile. If you're trying to shove it between two things that are slightly curved or the surface is rough or anything like that or the actual quality of these things, you're going to get... It's just shit, right? Viscosity of fluids, how far you push, how... You know, do you really want to jam it in there? All this kind of shite. So these are just guides to give you a very, very basic idea of, yeah, no, yeah, no, right? It's ranges. It's massively about ranges. It's not about accuracy with these things. Fucking forget that. So there's two things I want to show because I've got um, two good examples. 
So number one is this old one, right? So this old one, I got this in a, a, a toolbox sale thing, a uh, uh, car boot, right? And this was like this uh, when I got it, right? So there's blades that are rusty. Now I use this for shims. You can see there's one cut out there. If you want to shim between a tool post and stuff like that, or anything, you want to shim anything up, these are great, right? Like I said, I got this with a, there's a bit I snipped off there. I got this with something. I can't remember. Like I said, I think it was a toolbox with bits in it. And it was a lot of drill bits, I think, and end mills. And these are all in uh, millimetres and imperial, it says on there. So the mark of the beast. And as you look, they've got corrosion and gooey shit on and all sorts. So these are no good, right? You don't use them as feeler gauges, and I don't. I use them as shims. Right. These two, on the other hand, are the same, right? These are identical. These are FG21s, and because of my own stupid fault, I bought this one about two years ago, and I had before that this one. And this one has got some rusty blades. So if I try and show you them all... To a degree, so this one, the uh, 10 micron, 100 micron one, that's got some rust on it. You can see there, these bits have got some shit stains on them. On the back of them, just as important, there's a load of shit stains and bits of rust and stuff on here, right? These are knackered, fucked, right? Forget them. If you've got any corrosion on them whatsoever, they're done, right? Just done. Just forget, don't use them for anything you care about whatsoever. Even though I've just said that these are basically get you in the ballpark figures. So, I bought another set. This is extremely well oiled, right? And, um, well, yeah, just ex extremely well oiled and goes in a little case with all my other measuring stuff that's basically in a little really useful box. I'm keeping this one because if I do bend, cripple, if you cripple these things, right, the really thin ones, if you cripple them, they're fucking done, right, because you can't stick them in gaps anymore. I do love the long finger ones, because they can bend. Bending them is not a problem, right, so if you get these and you bend them like this to get them between a valve or something, or any other kind of clearance you're trying to do, you bend them, that's fine, good luck with that one, the millimetre one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, bending them is fine, you know what I mean, you can bend them, that's not a problem, as long as you don't crease them. As long as you don't plastically deform them. But that's why I'm keeping this one. I'm keeping this one because if I ever fuck any of these, I hopefully have got a spare that isn't rusty. These are all oil to fuck now. Um, I basically just, with this one, the shit one, I didn't bank on the humidity and stuff when I stuck it in my toolbox. The moment I noticed it was shitty, bought another one. Right? And I might even just buy another set just so and keep it in this fucking packet or something. I'll keep it in a sealy bag with loads of them silicon little jobbies because they're great. Um, but yeah, the takeaway from this is they're accurate to nothing really, you know, eyeball accuracy, that kind of thing. It's all based on the feel. Loads of people tell you that how to work out the feel properly. I have literally checked these things and um, no, it's just not right. It's just literally not right. You can you can be quite a far bit out depending on what accuracy you want to use them to you know what resolution blah 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 repeatability all this kind of nonsense it's the end of the night I'm getting tired as you can hear um, but yeah the takeaway from this is they're not that accurate and don't fret about it too much if you're doing valve clearances in for the middle right that's basically the best place to be people think that if you go um, really large then you've got loads of room for it until it get tightens up and all the rest of it. Uh, now it's bollocks because now what you've got is you've got a big gap. That means there's a bit more acceleration before things actually slam into each other, which means that you know, your impulse is high, impulse forces are higher, a tiny bit, but they are, which actually can cause things to recede and compress and stuff a lot quicker. Um, can increase wear slightly, and it always increases noise usually. So just aim for the middle. You got a range, aim for the middle. That's generally where I'd like to be, because I'd like it to be really tight, tight. I'd like it to be really tight, but the problem with tight is that you, you run into the risk of binding and stuff like that. 
if you go too sloppy it rattles and sounds like fucking shit and actually can wear out quicker so right in the middle is a lovely place to be but you know it's quite simple i can get that one to fit quite easily that one's struggling and that one says no so it's the middle one that was struggling to get through but got through that's it you know what i mean don't start for, i've seen people do it they start stacking two or three on top of each other it's you, you don't need to be that accurate for valve clearances um but in the next video on this we'll literally measure piston rings clearances piston clearances we'll measure pins we'll measure pi uh, pistons we'll measure balls and so on i'm fucking done hope that makes sense <laughs> i'll see you in a bit